Hello everyone, Ian here from Able City in Burbank. Today I'm checking out how to get audio into a Sony Venice. We're going to look at onboard mic options as well as signals being pulled from a mixer recorder like my sound device is 633. Either way, we're going to get high quality audio recordings to your internal media. Before I get into specific microphone setups, I want to look first of all where the connector for audio is on a Venice. It's under the LCD panel on the assistant side and you see it's kind of tucked away underneath and it is a five pin which might be a surprise to you because most of us are used to seeing the traditional three pin XLR. So five pin connector on this camera and we need to have a cable that goes directly in there or we can use an adapter which we'll get to in just a moment. Also to the right I want you to notice the toggle switch. There's a three position toggle switch that is going to determine the type of signal that the Venice will be expecting to see. So we have our line level AES and our 48 volt phantom mic choices. So I gotta go through each of these sets but first I want to talk about how we can adapt a five pin connector to our traditional three pin connector. To go from my 5-pin to my 3-pin, I'm going to use an adapter from Wooden Camera known as an A-Box. And if you look at this, you're going to see that on this end it has the 5-pin connector to go into the Venice and it gives us our traditional 3-pin XLRs that we probably have with most of our professional microphones. So I'm simply going to put it into the socket here and that's going to give us the 3-pins on the side to connect our microphones. Here we have a Rode NTG1. This is a shotgun mic that requires phantom 48 volt power from the camera. So we're going to tilt down here. Let's get a little better focus. All right, and you can see that we have our A box installed. So I can go ahead and plug in the XLR3 from the uh, mic into the A box. I'll put it on channel one. I also want to notice something though. Look at the toggle switch. The toggle switch is in the forward most position in the mic 48V position. Now, if this is configured properly, you should be seeing a little green diode that is active next to that toggle switch, but it is not. And it's important to realize this is a great feature of the Venice because it's now telling me, hey, something in the configuration needs to be adjusted if you want power to your mic. All right, we're in our default menu here. Let's go in and turn on fan 48 power. So to do so, I'm going to press menu and this is the default uh, screen here. Select your audio option and then you want to go in and select audio details. Click on that and then you want to use the encoder knob here. Click in on the audio configuration menu and you want to roll down to where it says phantom power plus 48 volt and notice that it's turned off so let's open that up let's turn it on and when I do so notice that my green diode I open up the iris just a little bit see so it's a little better there you now notice that the green diode has now come alive that's now going to provide us power to a phantom 48 microphone as you can see I have plugged in the XLR and now we are getting a signal on channel number one. Let's give it a little clap. There you go. Now you can see it. Let's go into the menu for a little more detail. If I go into the audio tab of our quick screen here, now you can see the precise level. And if I wanted to, I can go in here and I can manually or set it to auto for level. And if I push in manually, now I have the ability to go in and increase or decrease that level according to the ambient audio level that I'm trying to record. Also notice in this view, you have a view of one through four. Let me close this down just a hair so it's a little easier to see. There you go. So now you have uh, channels one through four, and we'll get into that in just a moment, but one of the interesting things about the Venice is that it does have the capacity under certain circumstances to record four channels of discrete audio. Notice that the toggle switch is in the middle position for something known as AES. Also notice that I only have one XLR3 plugged in. That kind of gets to the heart of one of the unique characteristics of AES, and that is AES allows us to carry two channels of discrete audio over one cable. Not only that, it will bypass the internal preamps on the camera and it relies on the preamp of the sound mixer or the sound mixer recorder that is passing the signal to it. Now that I have my AES coming through, you can see 
that the levels on channel one and two are in unison. And also notice on the menu it says fixed. It's getting its level from the 633. And Notice that I also have channel 3 and 4 available if I was to bring the second XLR3 out of the 633 into the Venice, into my A box. I now could have up to four channels of discrete digital audio. I wanted to give you a quick cutaway of the 633 because notice on my left XLR out, it says AES. And notice 1 and 2, so it's confirming it's moving two channels of discrete audio over one XLR3 cable into the Venice. For line level, you can see that I've taken the XLR left and right from the 633 and I put it into my A box. And also notice that the selector switch, the toggle switch for my audio selection is now toggled to the left and is selected for a line level. Here I'm going to show you how to do a line level, but first I wanted to go over to the uh, Sound Devices 633 and show the routing menu. And notice item number two and number three say XLR left, XLR right out, and those they have been uh, selected to produce a line output. So what I'm doing is I have a, uh, the NTG1 is now plugged into XLR1 on the 633, and that could be recorded in the 633, but what if I want to pass that along and I want to have uh, a recording to the Venice as well. In order to get line level, I'm going to send the tone over to the camera and I need to set up those levels in camera. In other words, I need to have the reference tone or the level of the reference tone in the Venice match the reference tone level of the 633. This way, when I set levels on the 633, they carry over to the camera. So to do that, go back into menu, we're back in our audio, and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna adjust track one and track two to line up at 20. So we have the level being captured or the level being set on the 633. And as you can see, the level is now being carried over as a line level to the Venice. That wraps up my look at how to get high quality audio into a Sony Venice. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.